pleasure of uh, announcing that the bacon is ready. <laughs> but, but before we get to the, uh, to the marvelous breakfast buffet, um, Chris Wilbur, who is our uh, student trustee and valedictorian. <laughs> has to leave because uh, he has a final to make up. <laughs> and academics first, and we want to make sure he's on the stage for graduation. So I do want to, before he leaves, acknowledge that he is receiving a whole bag full of goodies. Um, the Student Service Learning uh, Coordinator AmeriCorps Leader in Service Award. He is also um, receiving the President's National Service Award for 354 hours, the Gold Award. And he's also a community service leader for his work with the Observer and the Green Club. So, congratulations. There you go. Bon appetit. Please sit down. Please start. Okay, we're going to move on with the program so that we can keep on schedule, which is uh, very unlike the college. But we're going to try it today. Um, if you, uh, this, is, this is really difficult for me because I'm facing the bacon right here. So, so if I get a little glazed and distracted every so often, that's. What, that's what it is, so. Um, Nicole Heaney, who did a, a great job yesterday with Peg Curro and some other folks planning the co-op breakfast, um, told me a story once about her son, who was in uh, one, of the, one of the lower grades and, and was kind of distracted and, and, you know, kind of the teacher said to the mother, you know, I know what's happened, this kid is kind of every so often just kind of looking off and the mother said, well, what, what What's going on? He said, well, I, every so often I just go to my happy place. And I thought, that's a good thing. And then she, she said, well, where were you? He was like, I was at the Olympics. I know, you know I thought, so I thought sometimes we learn a lot from, uh, from the little ones. So occasionally at a meeting, I'm actually at the Olympics or I'm, I'm somewhere else, Virginia Beach once in a while. So um, just bear with me. Um, one of the wonderful things about working at a community college is that whole idea of community and the whole idea that this is such a, a crucial part of our mission to um, be part of, to be of and in the community. Um, and I think this program of, of all the programs that we do really um, kind of epitomizes that whole responsibility and, um, and desire of the college to really give back, to learn from, to, um, to grow in, in the, uh, the neighborhoods um, in which the college serves. And, and there are a lot of them. If you think about it, we are, um, you know, all the way from the Attleboro's, you know, right up to the, to the uh, gateway to the Cape, and uh, now have three really active and, um, and vibrant campuses, Fall River, Attleboro, New Bedford, and I think very soon Taunton will be will be kind of coming up a little bit into the uh, you know the full campus status. I ho I hope at least in 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 the next few years. Um, one of the things that's different about service hyphen learning and um, about the approach that the college has taken to community college to uh, civic engagement is that it's not just community service, that it's firmly rooted in the academic side. So I think it's appropriate at this time to bring our chief academic officer up to stage. She's a little shy, so, you know, work with her. Uh, but Dr. Sarah Garrett. I knew you would crack a joke on me. Shy is not one thing I've been accused of. Good morning, everybody. Oh, what a beautiful morning for this wonderful event. Dr. Zahm, where are you? Yes, I love you, Dr. Zahm. Thank you so much for everything that you have done. You are truly a beacon of light in this college's this college's life. 
And um, I, the president and I are truly thankful for you and for the faculty, the faculty who are here who have done so much. Would you please stand? Some of the faculty have come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because without your efforts, and, and, and <laughs> I'm looking at <laughs> Professor Peril, who is sick and came out today. You know, I, I was teasing her. She has an academic body. You don't get sick until after classes are over. You know, your body just knows that. But, you know, giving of your time to these wonderful students who um, are giving of their time to the community, that is such a wonderful effort. You know, it's always about the power of one, the power of one. And I think about this project and how it multiplies from our campus and other campuses. And that's something that President Obama has um, put forth to the nation, a charge, a challenge. And I look at our students and I thought about the chords, you know, Chris was, Chris Wilbur was presented his, our valid Victorian, and um, so that the students will be wearing them at commencement. And I thought back to, and I was just checking with um, Mary about who were the first ones, and, and I was, I thought it was, you know, Jen and the first students and, and Kim. And Jen will be coming up to get um, an award later. But Jen Boulay, I, I said to her and I said to the president, I can't believe it was like yesterday that Jen was graduating from here with her associate's degree. And now she's about to graduate from Brown with her master's in public administration. <laughs> And, and we were laughing because Jack Nicholson is getting an honorary degree at her commencement. And so she's going to be sharing the stage with Jack Nicholson. But she's graduating from Brown and having that experience of giving, giving, of, of, of being a part of this civic engagement, service learning experience. Kim Fielding, previously Kim Rodericks, my girl there, she's at Holyoke. Our students go on to do great things, you know, because of the experiences of giving back, learning about giving, and being involved. And all of our community partners who are here today, I cannot thank you enough for being a part of this experience for our students. It is so important. And we thank you. We thank you so much for all that you are doing with our college and with our students. So as you partake of this wonderful food that our culinary arts uh, program, John Caresimo. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of them. Great bacon, uh, Mike can tell you about that. But um, just we will enjoy this day. It's a great celebration of giving and the power of one. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, another thing that really impresses me about the um, civic engagement program here is that um, Dr. Mary Zahm and, and the leadership team, I, I'll say, um, really focused on um, not just counting hours and worrying about you know how many people are doing whatever for, for whatever, but to provide a real opportunity for growth. And that whole concept of, of leadership and being able to um, empower students to actually assume leadership positions in civic engagement, in service learning, I think really sets this program apart from, from many others and, and really is something that, that I think the college and I know I personally am really proud of. I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. And um, I, w I was thinking about leadership, so of course I was thinking about the president because He's the, he's the leader, so you know. It's, it's, it's kind of a short leap for me, you know. Um, but I was thinking that in, in about 45 years of you know, the college history, there's only been three presidents. That's kind of remarkable. If, if you read things like, you know, any of the higher, you know, Chronicle of Higher Ed, or if you read any of the higher education newspapers or whatever, um, the turnover of college presidents is really pretty. 
quick. I mean, it's a, it's a tough job. It's a, it really is a 24-7 job. I, I, I pride myself on getting to a lot of things, and I can't keep up with the president. I'll admit it. You know, when I was like 7 o'clock, I'm like, all right, I think I'm, I'm ready to go home. He's like, well, you're not going to the game? There's a basketball game tonight, wasn't you? It's only like 7 o'clock. <laughs> I'm like, good night, Jack. <laughs> but uh, um, I, th I think that, you know, the, the president has really set the tone, and it, and it was he who, who brought the hyphen, I think, with him to, uh, to the college to really say that it's service hyphen learning. It's a connection between learning and service that really makes the program work. So it's uh, my pleasure to introduce the president of uh, Bristol Community College, Jack Sprague. Well, thank you, Michael. They use the word short and me in the same sentence. <laughs> well, he gave my speech about the hyphen, uh, but I want to welcome everyone. Uh, this is always an exciting uh, event, uh, uh, and Michael's right about, uh, as we all know, uh, everybody involved with it, the service and the learning, uh, what a great combination that is. And um, I, uh, you know, in the literature nowadays in education, uh, there's a great deal of, uh, commotion, if you will, or a, lot, a great deal of attention given to student engagement and uh, uh, becoming students becoming engaged when they go off to college. And uh, certainly community colleges are a, a prime example of that kind of engagement. And within the community college, and specifically within Bristol Community College, this uh, program is uh, absolutely a gem uh, in terms of getting students engaged. And uh, you can see the success that the students have elsewhere in addition to the areas that they're doing the service learning. And that's because, you know, they're, they're, they are engaged in what they're doing now. And uh, what they're doing now is earning a degree or a certificate or whatever their purpose is, is coming uh, to Bristol Community College. And service learning uh, not only enriches that ex particular experience for them, but it enriches the entire uh, what I always talk to talk about as the holistic experience at Bristol, the Bristol experience uh, for all of our students, and it's so important. And uh, because of service learning and the great dedication of the faculty and staff and the leadership of Mary uh, to move this forward, we started with virtually nothing when uh, when uh, Mary first started with this, and look how it's built up into a, a true gem of the college. So. Uh, Mary, I want to thank you, and uh, I know you'd be the first to thank everybody else who participates uh, in it. Uh, so I think we're going to try to stay on time and move forward with the uh, awards. Uh, I can't uh, thank you enough for uh, the great work and for the students. I want to uh, mention to you, as you see with uh, Jen Boule and, uh, and Kim uh, Fielding and others who have our alums and uh, been involved in student engagement and service learning, it continues as part of your life thereafter, and uh, and and you just keeps the the waters keep spreading with these pebbles going into it. So, uh, very uh, we don't want you to stop just because you graduate from Bristol Community College. We want to be keep you involved in the community uh, as uh, some of those people that you've done service learning with uh, in those entities in the community. You see how committed those people are. We're going to meet some of them today. Uh, to what they're doing for humanity, okay, for the community. And uh, that's what we hope that you will take with you, uh, uh, always flying the BCC flag wherever you go, but also bringing that community spirit with you. So I'm going to, uh, it, my pleasure now to begin with uh, some of the awards of Mary and Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Mike's out of a job now. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Office of Student Life, Kathy Burns, are you here? Stand up and take a bow for co-sponsoring this event for us this year. And of course, Academic Affairs and the Office of Civic Engagement, Dr. Sarah Garrett is co-sponsoring the other half of the event. And I'm very thrilled to have you all here today. Um, and I appreciate you coming out. We have over 600 students who participated in service learning this year and community service. And of course, they're not all here, but um, they are eligible to receive certificates. And the 600 students, plus the President's Awards, 
plus all the other civic engagement that goes on in the nursing programs and in other programs that are not documented with our program. You can see PCC makes a big contribution to the community. And I'm very pleased to be a small part of that. We already thank the culinary arts students and um, Chef Caresimo. We could thank him again for the breakfast. <clears throat> Everybody's always jealous that we have such a good program. We have better food than anybody else around here. Uh, any of the other universities have just catered food. And I'd also like to recognize the fact that Sally Cameron gave us all Bristol Bee Honey, locally grown honey, and it's on your table. So I want to bring attention to that. And we have a wonderful sustainability program that's involved with service as well. So on with the awards. I'm gonna recognize all these people um, today. Um, the first awards are for service learning faculty, and many of the faculty that are here have already won the awards. Their names are on the back of the program. But um, the students will uh, nominate a professor who they feel has contributed to the program. And the first person is not here. Um, she sends her apologies, is Rose Farrow, um, who's an uh, instructor of computer information systems. And she's also one of the people who participates in the middle school math and science event that we have every year. So she's a good friend of the program. The next person is here is Sharon Perro. Would you please come up to get your award, Sharon? <laughs> Assistant professor in nursing who's here despite the fact that she can hardly breathe. We're all the same, right to the end here. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Sharon. Um, Sharon's going to say a few words a little later on in the program. And another one is Phyllis Wentworth, one of my colleagues, assistant professor in psychology. <laughs> and she teaches in Attleboro as well in, as in Fall River, as, uh, too. And um, the community partner I'm really excited about, could you pass me that? Partner Award this year is going to Dan King of Share the Harvest YMCA Community Farm in Dartmouth. Would you please come forward? <laughs> Dan participated in our service opportunity fair last September, and he really caught the attention of a lot of our students. We have pictures up there of us going to the farm, Nicole and her son and me and Jan and her daughter. Uh, picking weeds and all kinds of things on 9-11 um, at, the, at the farm. And also one of our students, Tamara Bryant, who will be recognized in a few minutes, became a AmeriCorps leader there, and now she's a acting volunteer director or something there. We've had students participate in all the functions over there. So, And I wanted to give a plug because they're open all summer long and they need people to pick vegetables and... Uh, help out. So if anybody's looking for a service opportunity over the summer, call Dan. And I've got the flyers on the table over there. Okay? Um, and of course, all the food goes to feed the hungry. And unfortunately, we have a huge need in our communities right now. Uh, it's really too bad. And the next award is for service club advisor is Megan Nabella Bowen. <clears throat> and Megan... Megan is advisor of both the Road Rack and the Engineering Club. And she's always the go-to person whenever I need something uh, for the Cuss Middle School Day or some other function. Uh, she is always there for us, and she's a good friend of our program. And her students have a lot of experience. I had a student leader in my class this year who was working at Milford Middle School to build water vehicles and teach the children in the seventh grade, I think it was, to use these water vehicles, his pictures up there in our, our program. Um, and Megan will say a few words in a minute too. One of our favorite programs is one of the ones Jen Belay started many years ago as Be Enriched program. And every year I try to force people like Dylan to be in the Be Enriched program. And that's a program where BCC students teach what they like to do, like either Spanish, scrapbooking, photo, 
Sally Cameron did knitting one year. And they go over and teach what they're good at. And it's an after-school enrichment program, which was founded by a BCC student and first led by Jen and Doreen Lingley. And we have Cynthia Wolf Boswell, who's in Russia right now. Hello. Uh, <laughs> she is the director of the program now. And she had two assistants this year, Joellen Hunt and Joanne Lyons. Um, and would you please come forward to be recognized? Um, <clears throat> they're twin sisters. <laughs> Only one could be here today, but it's pictures of the two of them that I took last week at Tansy. And Dylan said, I didn't know the difference because they're twins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And there so, are <laughs> there are two of us. Did you get the two awards? Why don't you take one for your sister, too? Oh, God, here we go again. Yeah. Um, and so, I really appreciated your efforts. And I know Dylan was telling me how much you helped him with the science projects oh, yes. and everything else. Yeah. Um, Brian, Brian and Rumi as well. Yeah. And um, it, it was, it's a wonderful program because it's a win win for everyone because um, I, the, the students enjoy the, the students, and, um, the, the BCC students. and. I think the community recognizes this is something that the, the students of BCC are giving back and setting role models for the little ones. It was a win-win. And for me, too, to see this thing, this wonderful program in practice, it really does work. And that program is funded by uh, the BCC Foundation in part. So that's always a good thing, too. Yes, well, thank, thank you very you. much. And as the president mentioned and Michael mentioned, we couldn't run the program with our little staff unless we had civic engagement um, people uh, helping us. And uh, this year, we recognize three of the new people who kept the office together this year, the Center for Civic Engagement staff, our federal work study students, and AmeriCorps service leaders in service, AmeriCorps leaders in service. And so I'd like to present them with an award. Uh, the other two people got it last year, but Tamara Bryant. She's the person who keeps us organized up there. <laughs> and she's working at the farm. Um, and uh, she's been great, great motivator. And one of the things we have this year is Facebook. And all of our student leaders put their projects up on Facebook, and you get immediate responses. Uh, so it's really great uh, publicity for the program and a recruitment tool. Nicole Collins. Where did Nicole go? Oh, she stepped. Oh, oh, there she is. I was afraid you'd left. Nicole Collins, AmeriCorps leader in service. She worked all last summer. She works for the Bold Coalition. Um, and she'll be getting more awards. She'll be up and down the whole morning. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. And uh, Chris Wilbur already left with his goodies, we know, before breakfast. So he's been a wonderful contribution, too, to the program. And now I'd like to introduce the first of our guest speakers is Megan Abella Bowen. Oh, you really don't want to tell me that. <laughs> well, first off, I want to say thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about uh, civic engagement and community service learning. I've been involved with community service learning through Rotary International since probably 15 years ago. And I got involved here at BCC originally through the Road Rat Club. I was asked to help be the advisor for the Road Rat Club. And it just kind of compounded from there. But I just want to take a few minutes to talk about what it's meant for both uh, myself and our students and the community at large. So as I mentioned, I got involved through Road Rat or being an advisor to the Road Rat Club. And that's a, that's a given. Our, our motto in Rotary International is service above self. And the year that I got involved, we had a phenomenal group of students. I, Jen may be in one of those pictures, or if she's not, it just was a happenstance, because she and uh, Doreen Lingley were both 
heavily involved in Road Rack. And one of the things that the Road Rack Club had been very involved in when I, became, uh, when I came to the college was the hunger issue and um, doing the Oxfam Hunger Banquet. And it's something that they take very, very much to heart. How do we help to address the issues around hunger in the, um, in the United States, but also internationally, what happens every single day? And the Road Rack students have been very involved. They've always wanted to be giving back to the community. So with them, that was a very simple way to get involved in the community. They were always looking for opportunities. I then actually was approached by a group of our students in engineering. And one of the things that was amazing to me is, I, I guess I shouldn't be amazed, but our students here at BCC, they want to be a part of something bigger. And they're just looking for that opportunity. And many times engineering students are thinking, well, how can I be helpful? What do I have to put on the table? Well, engineering students actually bring quite a bit to the table. And I was amazed because we originally got them involved in doing activities with Professor Zom, doing the cusp middle school activities, which you see some of those there, where we bring the kids in and we focus on uh, activities in engineering like solar and hydrogen fuel cell cars, wind power, things along those lines. And my students started going, ooh, this is kind of fun, and, and this is information that I like to give out. How could we do more? And that ended up moving into a couple of other activities. Through the Department of Engineering, we've really been reaching out to the community to say, hey, we have a program here, and our students will be the ones who lead a lot of the activities to get the other high school students more involved and more interested in what we do. And again, the students, all we had to do was say, we have this opportunity, and I was always amazed at how quickly they'd step up to the plate and go, I want to be involved. What do I need to do? And so we'd give them a little bit of background, but really, they run with it on their own. They, basically, you give them a little bit of leadership, a little bit of guidance, and they take off on it. And on the bottom right-hand side, or actually, it's not on this one, we'll go to the next one, um, Professor Zahm mentioned the ROVs, the underwater robots. That's kind of been our bread and butter in the uh, engineering department over the last few years. A lot of our students have been asked by middle schools to come in and help teach middle school kids how to build underwater robotics. And for our engineering students, this was an opportunity not only for them to give back to the community, but really to realize in themselves that they had skill sets that were very valuable that they could offer into the community. And today, we've um, actually serviced, uh, provided services to quite a few groups. But I think what you see here, and I think it falls back on something uh, Dr. Sprague said just a few minutes ago, is that once they leave, or I'll go back, once they leave BCC, they don't stop giving back. Uh, the student up in the upper right-hand corner there, that's Helder Lobo. He's now at UMass Dartmouth. He came back to me this past fall and said, we're at UMass. We want to be involved in community service. My engineering club over here wants, uh, wants a way to get involved. Is there something I can be doing? So again, once you, once you get that spark going, it really just keeps on going. The students really love that involvement. So as I mentioned, we've been doing this for a little over two years with the engineering club. In that time frame, we have really touched quite a few people. Over 20 teachers, or over 28 teachers, uh, my students have helped to teach them how to build the ROVs. They go back out into the schools and help mentor those teachers so that they don't feel like they're on their own once they actually get back into the classroom. We've supported over 200 students um, across southeastern Massachusetts, just as pr uh, Professor Zom said. Uh, one of our students uh, is up in Milford. He started his own ROV team up there and really took off on his own. And really, we gave him a little bit of training, but they really uh, build on that on their own. And then this past spring, we had 12 different teams of middle schoolers who competed in an underwater robotics competition. I can't do all of this on my own. If it wasn't for the students and their desire to be involved, these sorts of activities wouldn't happen. And this, I think, says a lot about the students at BCC and about our young people in general today. And I think there's a lot of times that in the news they want to talk about all the negatives about our young people. But I think all of you here today and the students who aren't here today really are the future and represent where we're going. And then these are just a few more pictures of some of the ROV things that we do. Um, but it's something that has taken off, and it's amazing because we now get asked by a lot of different schools, how do we get involved? And um, so each year I really put it to my students to recruit new students to get involved. And they're the ones that bring them on board, train the new students, and then we send them out. And we just give them a little bit of support, but really I'm amazed at how they do it all on their own. 
and that's just about it. My program's gone. That's okay. Um, Sharon Perro. Good morning. I will apologize right up front for my voice. So I, if it gets too bad, just kind of give me a wave and tell me to go away quietly. I broke my first rule, which is, as a nurse, you're not supposed to be sick. But I am. I guess, according to uh, Dean Garrett, I am. I am an academic body. So I'm very pleased to be here. I'm honored. I'm privileged. Um, I have been teaching in the nursing program for 10 years now. And about two and a half years ago, I took over the last course in the program, which is Nursing 203, which is Trends in Nursing. And it's their final capstone project. The students are about to graduate, and they're diligently right now preparing for their pinning ceremony on Monday. So in their honor, I wore my pin today. But it, it's a professional issues course, and it's taken concurrently with their last clinical course. It's viewed as their capstone or culminating experiential project where students are asked to synthesize their knowledge and to apply many aspects of their developing nursing knowledge base. Within the course, a significant contribution is made to those, by those soon to be graduate nurses in a community service learning project. The students are asked to work in small groups with like-minded peers and to explore their own community health needs. Together, the students partner with the community and journey towards healthier outcomes for the populations that they'll serve. For a very brief time over the semester, the students are in community, and they recognize that they're guests. It's not a place for them to tell the community what their needs are but it's a place for them to attentively listen and partner with their community. They negotiate with their partners an action plan in the form of an evidence-based nursing project or nursing intervention, which is a health project, a health promotion project. They utilize, the nursing students utilize their knowledge and their skills and they research what is best practice out there for that need that that community has um, defined. They meet with me and they discuss the needs, they meet with the community, we review the results of the best practices and they decide collaboratively on a project and how they will actually implement that project in the community. They design curriculum based on the best practice and then they go out on their journey. They use a developmental theorist to guide how they're actually going to teach the elements out in the community. And then in addition to their own small group work and the conference work with the communities and myself, <clears throat> they participate in an online blog where we actually develop concepts of community so that they respect the partners that they are working with and the elements of community health nursing. They complete their projects and then they have to evaluate their outcomes, how well they met their goals. And they log in all of those activity hours and all of the tasks that they accomplished and they evaluate their own performance. Then I ask them to present verbally, op openly to the nursing community, to the academic community, their projects. And it, that opens them up for a peer review so that they can have questions and comments and critiques and learn even further in the classroom. And they prepare a group project paper and submit it. So they have to work together in many ways with their community, with their faculty, um, and with each other. Over this past academic year, we've had a large number of nursing students go through the program. Very proud to say because the community needs nurses right now. We've had a total of 115 students that will graduate from Bristol Community College over this academic year, which is just marvelous. And because I just finished grading their final projects, and that's probably why I'm so sick, right? <laughs> um, I, I'm very pleased to say that we had 1,186 hours of community service just this semester. 
That's not even, you know, adding on to the fall semester. So we've, we've made a contribution, but we've learned so much more. And that basically outlines the process that the nursing students go through. But what's kind of really special is what happens along the way. I am very privileged to witness and to walk with these future nurses who will care for you and for me very shortly <laughs> and see their commitment to care and to caring. Um, I serve as their coach and as their cheerleader, but they are the ones that, that are the catalysts who partner with the community and they set out on a journey to make a difference in people's lives. That difference this academic year has occurred in many places, in preschools, in elementary schools, as our youth were taught how to care for their teeth, how to wash their hands, how to cough in their sleeve, and how to eat their fruits and vegetables, and when necessary, to stop, drop, and roll in the event of a fire. That difference occurred in daycare centers where young preschool students were better prepared for their own visits to their doctors by bringing their teddy bears to a teddy bear clinic that the student nurses role modeled compassionate care. That difference occurred in youth sports leagues where adolescents were educated on sun safety and on melanoma prevention. It occurred in community centers and YMCAs and food pantries where our adults and families were taught how to know about their risks for diabetes, the warning signs of a stroke, and when they should limit their salt intake and why, and also how to protect and care for their hearts with healthier lifestyles. And that difference occurred in community centers and councils on agings where adults, older adults, were coached in emergency preparedness and how to fill out medication forms by caring and skilled nursing students, and also how to prevent their risk for falls through the use of Tai Chi. So when we talk about Bristol Community College, we talk about it in the sense that Bristol Community College has community in the middle of its name. And it's so apropos, don't ever change that. I know that you asked for input from that, <laughs> President Sprague, a while ago. It is such a community organization. And our nurse, nursing students come from this community and they live within the community, and they consistently give back to their community. They do it with knowledge, skill, and care, and they're really unsung heroes and heroines. And so I say we are very proud of them. Very, very proud. Thank you. And now Phyllis Wentworth. I need to apologize in advance for my voice too because due to allergies I'm coughing quite a bit today so um, I am very honored to be here as well and uh, in thinking about this um, breakfast and the students who we're honoring today um, Robert Coles came to mind he's a famous child psychiatrist who teaches at Harvard and who authored a classic book entitled The Call of Service Coles was an early proponent of making service learning a staple of college education. He argued that volunteering our time in the community gives us a chance to think about how we can contribute back. And he thought learning to close that circle by considering the ways in which we can give back is a crucial part of college education. I admire the way one reviewer summarized the theme of Coles' book. He wrote, again and again, the stories in this book affirm that service is not a hierarchy, but a, but a reciprocity in which the distinctions between teacher and pupil, giver and receiver, helper and helped, constantly dissolve. The students who I've been lucky enough to work with have pursued service learning opportunities through a child development class that I teach online. In most cases, I never meet these students in person. Yet their experiences, usually in childcare centers, public schools, and community centers, come alive through their reflection papers, which are read by everyone in the class at the end of the term. The students write about connections between their volunteer work <clears throat> and their academic work, 
And then they typically sound a variation on the theme from Robert Cole's book, the way that service can dissolve distinctions between teacher and pupil, giver and receiver, helper and helped. They experience that process and are moved by it. I was reminded of these dis how these distinctions can dissolve um, in a most personal way a couple of weeks ago when my ninth grade son went off on a Saturday morning, quite ambivalently I might add, to babysit a boy with autism for the first time. He came back two hours later and sat on the front lawn where I was digging up dandelions, clearly moved, and wanting to explain how he'd felt taking care of his charge. He said, I took two long walks with him around his neighborhood. We walked in silence, which I've never done before, and I didn't even mind that he was talking to himself and carrying a big stuffed bear. If I have to write an essay for English about something that changed me, I'm going to write about this day. Those of you in this room this morning have a good sense of what that feels like. Perhaps you didn't feel it at first, or maybe your volunteer work was challenging or unproductive at times. Most often, though, we begin as giver, and somewhere along the line, somewhere along, somewhere along the way, we're transformed into the receiver. So thank you all so much for hearing the call of service and responding to it. Thank you. And now Melissa Massey. Sorry. Is that okay? You can never tell. You always sound too loud up here. Good morning. Um, pardon me if I'm looking a little bit off my notes, but at about 2 this morning during our lightning storm, I got an epiphany, and I decided to come and write it down, so my speech entirely changed. Um, thank you, first of all, for having me speak today. I'm honored to speak. I'm actually humbled by your greatness. Um, gathered today is one of Bristol Community College's most powerful forces for positive change. Every one of us has the power to change someone's life forever. It makes you feel pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> um, we tend to forget that. If you're like me, um, when a project starts, there's a lot going on. We have to get our venue, we have to get our students, we have to make a, well, I make a list. I make a list. And we have to get our materials and we have to fill out our forms. But we don't always think about what people will take away with them once they're done doing this project. Um, one student, I'll give two small examples. One student that worked with me on the Peace Bowl project. She had never used power tools before. It's actually Heidi Bruno, who's sitting over there. <laughs> and she was so pleased with being able to do that and just tell her family about that. But then she came up with me, to me later and said that she wrote a paper for class about the experience of doing the poll. And we weren't even, we hadn't even gotten it in the ground yet. She'd already written the paper. And a few quotes from that. Um, she said that this is more than just the project. It's reaping the benefits of doing something bigger than herself and contributing to the pride, student unity, and cooperation that is Bristol Community College. And then she went on to say, years from now when we have all graduated and moved on, will memories of us and the work we have done for the Peace Poll Project still linger on the BCC campus? Will the message it is meant to send be heard? And if so, how strong will it be? And how many people will listen? I plan to return to Bristol Community College one day, long after I've started a life outside these walls, and bring my family to see what I and many others have accomplished. Although the physical poll we are working on now may still not be here, I hope the message will be. And I read that, and I thought, wow, what a difference I've made in this one student's life. She's going to take this, and she's going to carry this with her forever and go on and change other people's lives. And then just yesterday, after we had that wonderful breakfast, I was in the library, boning up because I had to do my final final, and I ran into another student, and her name is uh, Christine, pardon me if I get it wrong, Christine Danton, 
she's around here someplace. I saw her in the line. She's over there. And she shared with me, she's been in my geography class, and she shared with me something that was very moving, and I had no idea she was doing service. With her Art for the Child class, she's been working with a school, and if I'm correct, it's K through eight, and she enabled students to um, change the lives of people as well. She started a program where the kids were making cards for the holidays, and they have a residential home across the street from the school. And sh the children made the cards, and then the staff got involved and was making the cards, and they brought them to them and they presented them to them themselves. And these people that were in the home were so moved, and the children were so affected by it that they said that they wanted to do it again. They didn't know that these folks had nobody. So that really, <laughs> It, it humbled me. I really was blown away by that particular project. And all of those stories, all of the stories, there's so many in this room of all of these students going out and changing people's lives and teaching others how to do the same. And um, it and then renders me speechless as I'm up here speaking. <coughs> it is a gift to affect change in the lives of others. And it's wonderful that we have the ability to go out and share this gift with people. Um, so my teacher that came up to Boston from North Carolina, Carol Mabry, she's very fond of grabbing quotes from things. And she gave us a packet with pages upon pages of quotes. And she said, grab one and always use it. Pick a different one today if you want to hold on to one forever. And one I find I go back to isn't necessarily from her packet, it's actually from Dinotopia. It says, one raindrop raises the sea. And we are all those little raindrops raising the sea, creating change in our community. So thank you, BCC, for giving me the opportunity to do this. So Melissa came into my office and she says, oh, I met this awesome student who did this thing. She deserves a leader card. She'll get a leader card next year. She's going to do a leader project. So Melissa is one of our students that runs the office and helps us run the program. I'd like to introduce Nicole Collins again. And uh, spontaneously, I just said to her, would you say a few words about your project? Uh, and she said, oh, OK. Uh, so would you come up, Nicole? She's not getting an award right now, even though it's mentioned on the program. There was a new award this year um, called the Newman Civic Fellows Award for Leadership and Service in the Community. And when I saw Campus Compact advertise this award, I jumped on it because when I graduated from URI with my doctorate, Frank Newman was the president who gave me my degree and said, you're done. No matter what's wrong with your dissertation, no one will ever know it. You're done. You got to <laughs> so I always remembered him fondly. And so um, President Sprager, uh, nominated um, Nicole, and she's one of 135 students nationally to win this award, which will present it at Honors Night as appropriate. But I did want to recognize and take credit for Nicole, and especially with the Bold Coalition, who she worked with being here. I thought it'd be nice if she said a few words about what she's been doing with them. Just a few. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Um, like I said, I'm not really prepared. Um, just to kind of give you a brief history of how I began working with Bulls, um, I started there um, in spring 2010. I decided to do service learning because I saw it on the BCC website and I thought it would be a good idea. And I ended up having a professor who worked part-time at STAR. Mm -hmm. So he put me in touch with Karen Fisher over at Bold, and I began working with them. Last year, Bold's main focus, well, Bold stands for Building Our Lives Drug Free their youth substance prevention program, but they do so much more. They focus on different programs. They have a prescription drug take back. They do have an early literacy program that they're working on. And they also try to educate the community as far as substance abuse um, in adolescence. I, when I first started working there, I helped organize a pediatrician breakfast. We invited local pediatricians from all surrounding areas to a breakfast to just kind of brainstorm about what were their needs in the community. 
um, after finishing that project, I began working with Karen Wood, who is right over there, um, on the early literacy program. Our goal is to kind of try to bring more support to parents um, within Fall River as far as early liter concerning early literacy when it comes to their children. Um, the goal is to get them started, to not just read books to the children when they can be begin re reading and they can begin um, talking, but to read to them as soon as they're born. And it encourages um, a lifetime of easier learning and um, become more successful. Um, this last project that I've been working on is another program that we have, we're working with Durfee freshman students, some of who had been getting in some sort of um, trouble or have some obstacles that they're facing. Um, and we actually have students from BCC who are tutors, and they're working on them to tutor them um, to help get them to pass these grades. Our goal is if we can keep them on the right track and we keep them um, motivated and successful in school, that potentially their risk of dropping out can like, go down. So um, that's pretty much it. So thank you. <laughs> So if anyone's looking for a project for the summer or next year, Bold Coalition and Nicole Collins will lead you there. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Jen, did you come up? I'm trying to take my job off. <laughs> and I was uh, Jen Boulay, who uh, literally is the poster child for uh, BCC and, and civic engagement, and she was part of, what was it, the U, was that U Transform, wasn't she part of that? U Improved campaign at one point, where it had two pictures, one in a sweatshirt or something, and one like, you know, so, so look around, she's there somewhere. Um, and she will uh, present with the president the President's National Service Awards. It's president with a capital P. Hi, good morning everyone. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of words before. Um, first of all, I really wanted to say how much of an honor it is to work for Dr. Zom. Um, being able to work for one of your mentors um, for a program that was so inspirational for you when you were a student. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to say that. Um, also, I wanted to offer a clarification. I know that um, Vice President Garrett said that I would be graduating with a master's degree. That's actually next year, but I am graduating with my bachelor's degree this year, so. <laughs> she kind of jumped the gun, but that's okay. It keeps the hope there. Um, so then I wanted to go on to tell you a little bit about the President's Volunteer Service Award, and that's something that this is our second year um, for being involved with this project, and that's something that is done at the national level through the President's Council on Service and Civic Participation. Um, the program started back in 2003, and each of our recipients will end up receiving um, an award lapel pin, a personalized certificate of achievement, and a congratulatory letter from Barack Obama. Um, in order to qualify for this award, you had to volunteer a minimum of 100 hours within the community um, from, I believe it's February of 2010 to February 2011 to qualify for this year's award. So first I'd like to go on and recognize the faculty and staff who will be receiving this award. And our first recipient will be Rebecca Clark, and she is the Associate Professor in Human Services. She will be receiving a silver award for 250 hours um, with her work through, it was in Guatemala, correct? Rebecca was at Gu in Gu Guatemala for that project, okay, yes. And our next recipient um, is Professor Carol Garand, who, ironically enough, was one of my professors as well. Um, she is an accounting professor here, and she is receiving the Bronze Award for 110 hours of service through the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, which provides free tax preparation for individuals who are considered low income. And our next recipient, I'm not sure if he's actually here, but it is Dan Gilbarg, and he is a sociology professor. 
he will be receiving a gold award for 1,560 hours of service over the past year. <laughs> Much of his work has been through the Coalition for Social Justice and the Coalition Against Poverty. And our next recipient is Deborah Line. She is the expert, expert well, I can't even say it, experiential learning <laughs> program clerk. She receives the gold award for 550 hours of service where she served as the treasurer for the first Christian congregational church. <laughs> oh, also, we would not have this breakfast today if it was not for Deb. <laughs> And our next recipient is Michael Myers, who is an engineering instructor, and he ended up volunteering 144 hours, which um, he'll be receiving a bronze award. He provided technical support and mentored um, students involved in the BCC ROV team. Okay, and he's not here, but we can recognize him. <laughs> Very busy. And our next recipient, um, is another VCC favorite, um, Marlene Pollock. She is a history professor, and she also is receiving a gold award. And may I add that this is the second year in a row that she's received this award for 1,560 hours of service. Um, she is also very involved with the Coalition for Social Justice and the Coalition um, Against Poverty. And I'm not sure if she's actually done this work this year or if it was last year only, but she's done work on the New Bedford um, School Committee as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'd like to go on and recognize the students who will be receiving the President's Volunteer Service Award. Um, they will actually receive their awards at the Student Awards Night, which is coming up. But um, if we could recognize them, if you could stand as I call your names so that you're recognized, that would be great. Um, our first recipient is Tamara Bryant, and she is receiving a gold award for 300 out, 308 hours of service for her work at BCC through the Civic Engagement Program. She was an orientation leader, a student senator, and she's also done work for sharing the harvest through YMCA Dartmouth. Thank you. <laughs> And um, another, our next recipient is Nicole Collins, if you could stand. She is receiving a silver award for 185 hours of service for her work through the Bold Coalition, Forever Pause Animal Shelter, Mass Perg, and BCC as an orientation counselor and a student senator as well. And then our next recipient is Rachel Collins. She will be receiving a bronze award for 118 hours of service for her work through the Narrow Center for the Arts, um, Dartmouth's YMCA's Family Fun Fest, the Samaritans, South Coast Center for Independent Living. So thank you, um, Rachel. And our next recipient is Christine Dufresne. She is actually the first recipient for this particular award. She is receiving the Blue Award, which is the President's Call to Service Award for a lifetime of um, 4,032 hours of service um, for her work through um, the Appalachian Mission Center. Is she? She's here. Oh, okay. Um, Christine is a student in my class online, distance learning. I have not met her, but she's in Kentucky where she's actually helping to run this project for the homeless people. So she's been there for the whole year. And so I'm happy that she's our first Blue Award recipient. <laughs> And then our next recipient is Tammy Durrigan. She is receiving this award. Um, it will be the Bronze Award for 149 hours of service for her work through um, the Tutoring and Advisory um, Center task over at BCC. She's been involved in a lot of other projects as well at BCC. Um, and then our next recipient is Jason Gonsalves. He will be receiving a gold award. J is Jason here? Okay, well he will be receiving a gold award for 800 hours of service for his work through the New Bedford Commonwealth Corps. So, congratulations Jason. 
And then our next recipient is Jessica Johnson. She will be receiving a bronze award for 192 hours of service for her work through the diagnostic, um, diagnostic outpatient and transportation services. Jessica? Okay, well, congratulations anyway. Then our next recipient is Melissa Massey who will be receiving a gold award for 550 hours of service for her work with the Global Charter School, and I believe that's in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> okay, and I will do my best to say this name properly. Venetius, okay. Venetius Pimentel will be receiving a bronze award for 118 hours of service for his work with YMCA Dartmouth Sharing the Harvest, um, local soups, soup kitchens, and for teaching English as a second language. Uh, yes, our students are very busy. Um, and then our final recipient is Chris Wilbur, who, um, as Mary said, received his awards earlier. Um, he's receiving a gold award for 354 hours of service for his work as student trustee at BCC um, and for his work with The Observer, which is the student newspaper at BCC. So in total, that um, ends up being 10 student award recipients with a total of 6,806 hours of service combined. For our six faculty and staff members who received the award, that is 4,174 hours of service. And that is a combined total of 10,980 hours of service within the local community over the past year. So thank you, everyone. Thanks. I, when we were going through the buffet line, somebody stopped me and said, this must be your favorite time of year. And he was referring to the food. But it, it truly is my favorite time of year because it, it's just amazing the stories that, that percolate around um, graduation time and, and the, the amazing work that people are doing. It's just, uh, it really is inspiring. Um, Rebecca Clark is going to um, recognize the community service leaders. She's at our outpost in Attleboro. She's a missionary. She's taken our program out to, to, to the nether region. So, so thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. I just need to um, echo Jen's words about Mary Zom. I mean, you all know what she's like. And it's just such an honor um, to work with her in this program. And I just love it. She, um, my very first semester here, I was in a new faculty seminar. And Mary came in for one of the days to tell us about this program. And her enthusiasm was infectious. And I just, I asked her, I said, I'd really like to be involved in this. And that's how I ended up doing all of this. So <laughs> be careful what you ask for. But I love it. This is, this is just such a wonderful part of my job in addition to teaching. Um, and I had one of my students tell me last week as I was reading their reflection papers for service learning, um, he made a comment about um, he'd never done any kind of volunteer work in his community. And if it hadn't have been for um, my class forcing him to do that, um, he would have never known what he was missing. And then he went on to talk about um, the things he learned from serving people in a, in a soup kitchen and also working with the Project Homeless Connects program that was held in Attleboro for that area um, and the things that he learned. So he did receive a lot from it as well and that's the purpose of it. Um, one of my favorite quotes is um, by Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in the world. I have the plaque over my front door and I always tell my girls as they're going out the door, as they're going out the door, remember that, you know, okay, mom, okay. Um, but these, uh, these next people that, um, and well, this is true for everybody here today, but these next students um, have really gone above and beyond and taken a step to be um, a student leader. They've decided that they wanted to organize a project, they've seen a need, they've recruited students to work under them, um, and they will receive the special red cord that they get to wear at graduation when they do graduate, and they get the framed certificate. So I would like to recognize these students today. Um, I I don't know if all of them are here, but I'm just going to call their names. Um, Nicole Collins, we've heard about her project. <laughs> With the Bold Coalition. And she did a great job for speaking on the spot, didn't she? <laughs> she did great. <laughs> 
Um, our next student is student leader is Tammy Durrigan, who organized BCC Professional Day events. Well, she helped Elaine Praviti with that, right? Um, recruiting students to help organize that and, and help set that up. So that was a wonderful help there as well. Tammy's done a lot of other things too. Um, our next student is Brandon Hamilton, um, who organized a project, Culinary Arts Events for Middle School Career Day. Is Brandon here? Brandon helped facilitate activities through the culinary program for the annual Civic Engagement Middle School Career Day. Um, our next student is Melissa Massey. <laughs> Melissa organized the Peace Pole Project, which I don't know if you've seen the Peace Pole that's out by the re Reflection Pond out there. Um, we have one at each of our campuses in Attleboro, New Bedford as well. She led those efforts to design and paint the Peace Pole so they could be outside um, for each of the BCC's campuses. And that was a great program that day. Um, our next uh, student leader couldn't be with us, but we need to mention her, Mackenzie Reed. Um, she organized the Cinderella gown swap in the Attleboro area through the Cutting Edge Salon, um, and we have that community partner with us today, too, so thank you. <laughs> they gathered um, prom dresses and formals for, uh, for female students in that area so they would be able to go to the prom. And those girls, that, that was a project, um, some of the students in that were in my class, and they just loved going and watching the girls try on the dresses, pick them out, and it was just, it was a wonderful experience for them. Um, our next student, he had to leave, Chris Wilbur, um, for the Observer and Green Club. He managed the Observer School newspaper and assisted with the club formation, planning, and outreach for the Green Club. He's taking his final. Um, and our last student leader is Jessica Wong. Um, her program was the National Youth Violence Prevention Week. Jessica's project raised awareness about violence prevention during the National Youth Violence Prevention Week, working with um, CD-REC and other local youth groups. So thank you. Those are our student leaders. <laughs> so in a total, we had six group projects for um, this academic year, 2010-2011. So thank you to our uh, student leaders. Um, next, I'd like to just do a recognition of some of the, um, the programs, some of the groups, uh, group projects. Um, let me just make a mention, are those these at the bottom here, some of the specific ones, okay. Um, and if you're here and part of these projects, if you'll just stand up for this, um, our early childhood and education program, students in that program, the Be Enriched program, um, the BCC Honey. Um, dental hygiene, health services, and nursing programs. Okay, our students, um, all of our students who participated in service learning through their courses received their certificates in the mail, so they will be receiving those certificates. But if you are a student who participated in a service learning project for any of your courses, would you please stand at this time so we can just recognize you? Thank you, thank you for coming. Um, and last, um, I would, oh, I need to also recognize the ambassadors. Any of our student ambassadors here today? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, and then I'd also like to give certificates to um, our community partners, to our service learning faculty, and our advisory board members. Um, particularly without this first group, and they are in alphabetical order here. Um, this first group is what makes us able to do the program, is to have these wonderful partners in our communities um, here in Fall River, in the Attleboro area, and in New Bedford. Um, and we are always trying to recruit new community partners as well, and that's always an exciting thing that I like to do, is I like to find uh, these these agencies, these groups in the, in the community and try to partner our students with them. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, so give, I will be giving some of these certificates or I'll give them to President Sprega and you can hand them to them. Um, our first community partner group is um, BOLD. 
Old Coalition, somebody come up, get your certificate. And just if a representative from your, if you're here, representative come up and receive your certificate. Thank you. Um, our next community partner is Citizens for Citizens, the Heating Assistance Program. Um, our next community partner is the Dartmouth Council on Aging. Come on up. Thank you. Our next community partner is Fall River Youth Services. And Uh, our next community partner is HMEA, Horace Mann Educational Associates. Um, our next partner, New Bedford Police Department, the Domestic Violence Unit. Next, we have Somerset Town Hall. Um, our next partner is the Cutting Edge Salon and Spa. This is in Attleboro, the group that did the Cinderella um, project. Uh, our next partner is the VITA program, Citizens for Citizens. I could just take a few moments of your time. <clears throat> I noticed on the back of the program that I've been coming here for the last five years <clears throat> and getting a certificate, which I appreciate very much. I put it up in my office and I'm quite proud of it. And I have breakfast, but I feel kind of like a user. So I want to give something back this year. <clears throat> so we do have something to give back to the college, BCC, a certificate <clears throat> from the Internal Revenue Service. You'll notice in the upper corner there's a, there's a nail missing. And the reason for that is I've been trying to pull all of them off so that I could fill in Carol Garand's name on the certificate as well. <laughs> but it, I'll read it to you. This is the uh, Internal Revenue Service Community Service Leadership Award. It's a certificate of appreciation presented to Bristol Community College in recognition and appreciation of outstanding effort, dedication, and personal contributions in building stronger workplaces and communities throughout the great, this great nation. And it's signed by the Acting Territory Manager of the IRS. <clears throat> Thank Paul and the uh, Citizens for Citizens and the IRS. We don't usually say we thank the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. It's very thoughtful. You know, it's kind of scary when they say the IRS has something we want to give you. <laughs> this is a good thing. Um, and the last community partner we'd like to recognize is the YMCA of Dartmouth. The next group we'd like to uh, take a minute and recognize is our faculty because, um, again, without our community partners and without students, and uh, we couldn't do this without the faculty who offer this as part of their um, part of their courses, whether it's required or it's extra credit or part of the, uh, your your courses. Um, our first faculty member is Megan Abella Bowen, and we heard about her wonderful projects. Carol Garand. Peter Holman, <laughs> Joellen Hunt, Thank you. 
We have a lot of faculty and several of them couldn't be here today. Dana Mayhew. Jim Pelletier. <laughs> Sharon Perro. Ron Weisberger. And Phyllis Wentworth. You know, I just asked Becky if I could say something, including her. Uh, I, wherever I go, I always talk about any institution of learning is only as good as its faculty. And all the wonderful things you hear about Bristol Community College uh, starts in that classroom with the uh, student interaction. Uh, we have wonderful staff and uh, everybody else at Bristol Community College, but we uh, also want to acknowledge the outstanding uh, faculty, because without the faculty, nothing else would happen. So uh, not just the people that were awarded uh, today uh, that you've recognized, but our whole faculty, and that's what makes BCC such a unique place. Thank you, faculty. The last group that we'd like to recognize today um, is our advisory board members, the Civic Engagement Advisory Board members. Um, the first member is Jennifer Boulay. Um, I should mention that this group of people work with Dr. Zom um, and the rest of the team to help strengthen the program. What can we do to make it better? How can we keep sustaining it and keep growing? And as you can, you can tell, we are continuing to grow, so it's an exciting thing. Um, the next member is Kathleen Burns. <laughs> Nicole Collins, <laughs> student representative. Kathy Torpe Garganta. Christian McCloskey. James Pelletier. Teresa Romanovich. <laughs> Michael Vieira. <laughs> David Weed. <laughs> and our last member, Ronald Weisberger. Last but not least. I'll turn it back to them. Thanks. I, I, was, I was sitting here and, I, and one of the things that um, I was thinking about is the story in the Bible about the loaves and the fishes. And when you think about the um, the staff of, of the Civic Engagement Program, it really is truly very few people working officially very few hours. And we take these very few hours and multiply them into, into such amazing work um, that I, I just want to thank you know, Dr. Mary Zahm and, and the team. Um, I want to recognize Kathy Gaganta, who is our Dean of Attleboro and our Associate Vice President for Enrollment Services and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and Dean Terry Romanovich from uh, the New Bedford campus because it truly is a college-wide program and it really has expanded just so much over the past few years. Um, it's remarkable. So I just want to recognize uh, Vice President Steve Ozug in the back there in the cheap seats. Um, and if I forgot anybody else, I'm sorry. Um, but it, it truly, every, every day I'm, I'm blessed to come on this campus because every day I, I am just so inspired by the work of the faculty and the staff and the students that it's, it's just a remarkable, remarkable place that we have here. So I want to thank you all for, for being part of it. I want to thank you all for being here today. And uh, 
Go forth and continue the service. Thank you.